Yo, what's going on? Fontaine here, VIPSoundLab.com. And I'm going to go ahead and help out, uh, you know, my boy, he came at me with a question. And sometimes when you you answer one question, sometimes you can answer a million questions. A lot of people might be having the same uh, work ethic with the same workflow and could be having the same scenario. So I'm going to break it down like this right here. The question from my man is basically he was trying to set up um, when you right click, you may learn automation. See, when you right click your MIDI Learn, when it comes to Contact 5, it's going to auto map to your MIDI controller. So if you slide a knob or key, if you've seen the last video on the Sinister Drums, um, which was a lot more technical and in depth uh, than this video, you know it will automatically sign. But sometimes when you're inside certain DWs, they work a little bit different. His question is more or less geared towards Native Instruments Machine. This is Machine 2.6.2. Stay tuned, I will be doing more tutorial videos on Machine once. Uh, more relevant updates come out. The 2.6 is dope. <clears throat> you know, you get to control your external instruments and all that good stuff there. You know, but I'm waiting for, I don't know what word am I looking for. I, I don't know. I'm looking for just something more from NI. So I'm just going to be patient on that. But yo, if you're not a member of the site, make sure you be a member of the site, man. Because we're going to keep dropping these free tutorial videos on y'all. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, to answer your question, what he's doing, okay, he's right clicking like this. He's hitting MIDI learn, okay, and then he's turning. Um, let me turn my pad mode off. Let me get on the right instance here, okay. A contact, okay, machine. You want to be on your uh instance of contact. You notice how your hardware controller, okay, like let's say if this is the machine screen right here, right? You got one screen like this, you have another screen on the other side, right? Okay, boom. You're gonna see the same number sign zero zero zero. This is not a sharp sign, this is not a music note. All right, this is just assignments. These are pages. You have pages one through 16. I'm gonna try to keep this video as brief as possible and get this in quick as I can. 16 pages, meaning just think of these as just like a little suitcase to hold your little defaults. Okay, when you do set this up, make sure that you save it. Okay, when you hold this with your mouse and you move it like this, see how that knob is moving, man? Your mouse is not gonna slide like this and map. Okay, that could be one problem you could be having. When you hold down the left button on your mouse, this is to control this knob. Negative effect to a positive effect. Okay, negative effect. When I when I say that, I'm saying negative effect meaning moving to the left. Positive effect is what I mean when I say moving to the right. Okay, and contact. When you right click and you're moving your knob and machine up on the number and it's not assigning, that's because in contact, it worked a little bit different with certain uh, DEWs and certain programs. I guarantee you when you right click it and press MIDI learn like this and move a knob or a fade on your on your MIDI controller, I'm telling you that joint is going to map. If it doesn't, you click this icon here, okay? Your host parameters are here, okay? Libraries, files, database, expert, automation, okay? Here's host automation, here's MIDI automation. Okay, MIDI automation, no. You want to be under host. This is your host, your DAW, okay? This would work more or less for your hardware controller. Okay, host automation, that's inside your DW, you know, whatever you're using. Okay, you see how the numbers, you know, they match what's over here and what's on your machine. All right, so you're mapping your parameters. So when you hold this this guy here, okay, see how it makes a little plus sign? So however you want to do it, I more or less like do mine uh, kind of in a, a sequential order. So it's, it's, I don't know, it just makes more sense to me like that. I'll start with the tune up there, then I'll go to the pan. You know, the volume, the distortion, the low pass filter. So, you know, if you're doing it like this, it's a little wrench time, but I mean, look how easy it is. I mean, you're basically, you're dragging and dropping. You know what I'm saying? So boom, you're just going like this here. I mean, literally you'll be done with this in, I don't know, 10 seconds. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just that easy attack. Decay, sustain, and release. You also can do switches. Like we got switches on this joint. So I can even assign them joints. It'll say on and off on your um machine. And boom, that's it. So from this point, when you're saving a contact, that's not gonna save like that. But I would say it'd be a good practice to do it. I would say, you know, right click here, save um that instrument as a patch only. Or if you want to save it with samples, it's up to you. Um once you do that and inside machine, go to file, save project with samples. That way you're covering all the bases. Make sure, you know, nothing's getting lost. 
you know, from that point, once you do that, you're good. Because if you open this back up, all this will be saved, you know, but in the plugin itself, you're going to have to go through every kit in here if you're going to want to set up like this and save it, you know, unless you're building off of this particular instrument. You know, if you don't want to, you know, one work around, if you don't want to, you know, keep going back and dragging and dropping, you can build off of this kit. Like once you save this, you know, you can hit the wrench icon and contact, right? You go under the mapping editor and you can erase these samples and build off it. And them, them uh, parameters still just stay um, set up in there. All right. So like, here's the kit. Matter of fact, let me demo some of the sounds. Okay, yo, if somebody didn't see the last video when we were demoing the sounds, I'm gonna let you hear some of the sounds up in this joint. This kit is for a producer, or rather this uh, plugin's for a producer. If you're the type of producer like me, you know, if you want dope drums out the box, you don't want a big learning curve trying to figure this out, figure it out that, going through a big manual. I'm telling you, you do not need a manual for this particular plugin. I do contact via scripting. I designed it in a way to make the GUI a very user, uh, very user friendly for any genre of music. I mean, because it's so self-explanatory. I mean, you got your effects here. You have from a negative effect turning blue to a positive effect. Don't let the red scare you. That just means, you know, you are just going towards a more positive effect. You know, this is less of an effect, more of an effect, you know, tape warmth. This would be like 100% to, you know, zero or negative, whatever comp threshold. You know, if you want to get your notes a little more softer in the mix, you know, it's just like a compressor threshold. It's not really limiting the sound, you know, because when you put the threshold at its, at its maximum um, setting here, it's going to be like full level, you know, depending, you know, how hard you're hitting or striking the keys because it's still velocity sensitive. As you can see right here, I'm using my mouse for this instance, but I'm just going to tap from the top of this key. It gets quieter. So it gets louder as I go down. Okay. So again, here's your stereo pan equalizer here, which is basically model of the SSL EQ. You have full and total control over these frequencies there. A low pass filter distortion. I guess I, you know, everyone's different, but for me, I use distortion, uh, particularly on 808s when I want to make some crunchy, you know, distorted 808s. I don't know. It just gives a nice color to it. Um, I, re I rarely use this on, you know, hi hats or snares, but you know, I know some producers who do, um, is, is there for you to use. I mean, you have, um, your bypass, which is here. If you want to bypass the effects, you know, this, uh, effects is labeled There's your stereo. This one's reverb. And of course attack the case of and release. I mean, of course, when I'm hitting a kick, you know, if you want to. Basically, sample start, in other words, moving towards sample end. That would probably be a good way to describe that if someone doesn't understand that. Decay, meaning playing the sample in its entirety, that can make it sound a little bit lower, you know, if you're using more of a negative effect. Whereas this way we get a lot, you know, louder when you increase the decay. Just think of that as like a, I don't know, like a, like, like a fade, like, like, like a reverse fade or something like that. All right. So you got your sustain here, which basically, let me see if I can find a long note. Like this would be perfect here. Okay. I got the sustain all the way up like this here. And I'm, I'm bringing it towards more of a negative effect here and adjust the release. Okay, it's almost like an ADSR in other words. The longer I hold the key, the longer the stamp is going to play when I let go. So let's say if you want to have it maybe like a hi-hat. You know, you might want to increase the release on that a little bit. You know, it depends on how you want to set it up or you can have it, you know, just tap the pad and it plays the sample out in its entirety. OK, 
Okay, so that's what those are for. All right, so the pages in machine are gonna be labeled. As you can see right there, they're all labeled. Attack the case, same release. Page three probably ends on, what? Well, actually we didn't need page three. Okay, so you got two pages of assignments. So you have these extra pages of assignments, of course, on this particular plugin, you wouldn't really need them because you have everything right here on one uh, user interface screen here or one page. And that's why I basically designed this plugin. I want to have everything on one page, but I have to go through a bunch of pages, you know, because basically I have multi script offsets um, where you can go through pages and, you know, you got a effects racks on other pages. I have note repeats, not a plugin like note repeats and, you know, things of that nature. But this one, I want to keep it a little more dumbed down, a little more easy to use, you know, I have everything right here. Like, boom. Okay. I'm in this joint. I got everything I need right here. I have to sit there and go through this, go through that. So once you put the wrench time in here, you save that, you know, save this as one of your default presets, you know, five minutes. I mean, you see how long it took me in this video. It was literally not even, you know, two minutes. So it's, it's relatively quick, you know, and then you can get in there. And then when you're on your hardware controller, you know, as I'm doing right here, you know, you can adjust the tune here as I'm doing there, the pan, you know, again, the mouse is over here and I'm just adjusting everything like this here. So that's a big time saver. You know, and you have everything, you know, just just ready to go. Just makes your workflow easier. So when you're in here, you know, then you hit the right arrow machine and you can see right there, the page one and page two is moving back and forth because I'm moving the arrow on my hardware controller. So now you can go, you know, even the uh, the effect switches down there. You know, if I want to see where they at on and off here. There's the uh, switches there, off, on, off, on. You know, you can control that, your sustain, your release. So everything is mapped out, you know, pre-mapped. But if you still have trouble with that, just email me, hit me up. You know, um, I could make a template. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could make a template uh, out of a machine session with a Sinister Drums uh, instance of the NKI because you have uh, the sinister drum. So yeah, matter of fact, email me on that. I could do that and you can open it up and see how everything's set up that way too. Just, you know, just says maybe like a resource, you know, to come back to in the future, you know, if you forget or something like that, or if you're, you know, you're, you know, you don't feel like going on YouTube or signing in or whatever, boom, you got the template right there. So just hit me up. Matter of fact, when I get done with this video, I'm going to make a template out of this. And matter of fact, if anybody, you know, has sinister drums, just hit me up and I'll, you know, I can attach this in a, in an email or something and send it to you. All right. So, um, matter of fact, I'm gonna show you something I was doing right now. Yo, I was like, yo, this is a perfect sample. Don't drink too much. We making the beats. I was drinking, man. And I was like, while I made this beat, man, where I was just like all over the place. You know what I mean? I do that sometimes. I make beats. Like, sometimes I make beats that's off. I was making, like, this choppy beat that's off beat. I wanted to make, like, an off beat, ill tempo, got your head nodding, like, bugged out. I don't know if people understand where I'm coming from, but sometimes I do that. Like, I make some bugged out beats. But right here, yo, if you don't want to hear a beat that's off, I would suggest, yo, know, just click off the video now. Go do what you're doing. <laughs> but, yeah, this right here, man, it's just a bugged out beat. I'm using sinister drums. You know, give you an idea, you can hear some of the drums, but this is like an offbeat though. You know what I mean? Just bugging out. That was um 
what I chopped up. Yeah, I chopped up um from that five thousand from that five thousand kit, the NPC five thousand kit. That was like this like little bug that loop and I put that in there and I was adding these drums to it. But you know the drums are thick and punchy, man. Like um in the last video I mean the last video I went into depth with some of the sounds. Like here's a bass. I can uh let me go to my instance of contact. You know, you can imagine the beat come in, boom, you know what I mean? Like, all them sounds is in there. I don't have my uh, MIDI controller hooked up right now. I'm using a machine, so I'm not too much of a uh, keyboard player when it comes to using the machine, the pads or whatever. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. i just go to some of the sounds right quick. You know what I mean? Just going through some of the sounds right quick. You know what I'm saying? Letting y'all see what's in this joint. Which reminds me, while I'm going through these joints, we even got some 808s in that joint. Yo, on the website, right? We got a um a demo that you can download because some guys were asking for a functional demo. So that's going to be my gift to you. Matter of fact, and I think about it because what I did was I made a, um, a fully functional demo, but the UI is deactivated. So in other words, um, I put some demo sounds in there. You can demo some of the sounds from it. If you don't like it, hey, you know, it's not for you. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a plugin. It's not for everybody, you know, but you can get in there and check out some of the sounds, you know what I mean, use it on your MIDI controller. But like when you come in here trying to do your workflow, these knobs, they'll move and everything like this, but they won't control any of the uh, parameters uh, that's inside the plugin. So if you wanna go ahead and download that and check it out, boom, go ahead and download that and check it out. But you know, if, you're, if your producer is really avid about sound quality, you know, you want something that's different and something that's going to stand out and something that not everybody has in the library. I would say come back and get the full version of the Sinister Drums because the library is bananas, man. I mean, we got like 20, 20 something kits, you know, a nice manageable set to get you in there without having like an overwhelming amount of kits. Then we have like another 23 um, instruments. I mean, you got your brass chops in there, um, bass you know, bells, organs, plucks, you know, all that good stuff's in there too, man. So I'm going to get out of here, man, because, you know, time's running long. You know, I basically just wanted to answer that question to my man. Yo, I'm out.